today I'm doing a penetration test using my Crossman 1377 air pistol. I decided to model these tests around field conditions. How a pellet acts at the muzzle can be wildly different from how it performs at average game distances, so all targets have been placed at a measured 12 yards. For those interested in 1377 power modifications, I'm going to run these same tests in a separate video after installing a flat top valve and piston so you can see the difference side by side. The video you're watching right now will address the penetration power of a 1377 with unmodified original factory equipment. Online, the H&N Excite Kappa Spitzkugel has pretty decent reviews across the board and is reputed to have good accuracy and penetration potential. It's also copper coated, which should help the pellet maintain structural integrity and slip through the medium, rather than deforming. This is a pointed pellet as well, which in theory should help. Most measured 7.5 or 7.6 grains on a calibrated scale, but there were a few outliers at 7.3 grains. This makes the H&N the most inconsistent pellet tested. Next up is the Beeman FTS copper plated pellet, which by my understanding is manufactured by H&N. This is a traditional field target configuration. Reviews online are generally very positive, so I'm excited to test this one. Interestingly, it weighs in at 8.6 to 8.7 grains, somewhat less than its advertised 8.8 .8 grains. This doesn't trouble me as the pellet exhibited excellent consistency. Last up, the wild card. This is the lead free offering by RWS, their Hypermax. RWS has never explicitly stated what alloy they use, but I bet it's some tungsten bismuth aluminum combination similar to high end waterfowl shotgun shells. On the scale, these came in at a consistent 5.5 to 5.6 grains and looked very uniform with no flashing or other anomalies. For reference, these are listed at 5.2 grains. As far as reviews, the Hypermax are pretty much all over the map. Some love them, some hate them. They might wind up being an excellent pellet in a lower powered 177 like my Crossman, or they could be another air gun marketing ploy. We'll see. A pellet that made my shortlist was the Metal Mag Predator. I'm sure it's accurate and out of a high power rifle, perhaps ideal. But the metal ballistic tip actually works against penetration, contrary to popular belief. In fact, ballistic tips like these are actually designed to encourage expansion. I've overlooked it in the 1377 for the same reasons I've overlooked pure lead pellets. In something with only moderate power, any expansion at all will work against penetration and performance in the field. One pellet I was pretty enthused about was the Gamo PBA Bullet. This is Gamo's solid copper projectile and as a result more than likely has better than average penetration. Gamo even mentions this in their product literature. Three things stopped me from including them in my test. First off, I couldn't find anywhere that stocked them locally. Second, they're expensive in general and even more expensive to order when you factor in shipping. And third, I considered the effect a solid copper projectile would have on the dead soft steel Crossman makes their barrels from and decided extended shooting with the Gamma bullet probably wasn't a good idea. So it's out. I so very much wanted to include a heavy for caliber pellet in this test, but alas the Beeman Kodiak just didn't work out. Most pellets have a bit of resistance when loading, but the Kodiaks were very difficult to chamber. The bolt required quite a bit of force to seat much more than I'd ever feel comfortable using on a regular basis. At the end of the day, the 1377 just isn't designed with these massive pellets in mind, and as a result, I've reluctantly pulled the Kodiak. The silver lining here is I learned 8.5 to 9 grains is the practical maximum pellet weight for the 1377. All targets are hung at a measured 12 yards. The rest is pretty self-explanatory, so without further ado, let's get to it.
The H&Ns failed to print impressive groups despite my best efforts. Let's hope the FTS and Hypermax do a better job. The FTS really came out of nowhere and surprised me with its accuracy. The flyer, if you can call it that, was no doubt my fault, and I bet with a bit more time and patience I could cut this group in half. If you look at numbers alone, this isn't significantly better than the FTS, but the groups are more consistent and the pellets just go where you want them to go. In some preliminary testing, I literally stacked them one on top of the other again and again at 12 yards, so I think it's pretty safe to say the RWS has the edge here. Our first penetration test is the ubiquitous tin can. If a pellet can't cleanly penetrate at least one side, I'd begin to seriously question its efficacy as a field round. I have to say I'm disappointed again. The H&N pellets barely made it through one side of the can and didn't even put a dent in the opposite side. Not boding well for the Kappa Spitzkugel thus far. Okay, we're definitely moving in the right direction here. The FTS pellets punched through the first side, cracked and dented the second side, but didn't fully penetrate as I was hoping they would. Let's see what we can get out of the RWS Hypermax. Did you catch it in the replay? The Hypermax pellets came out of left field and completely tore through both sides of the can and kept going. I really couldn't believe it. So at this point the Hypermax is the clear winner, followed fairly closely by the FTS and then the H&N in distant third place. For this test we're shooting at and hopefully through two layers of masonite. It's 1 8 inch thick per layer and a pretty good benchmark as far as air guns go, being somewhere between cardboard and particle board in strength. For the shooting it's going to go from left to right H&N FTS Hypermax. Alright, so that was the first round of shots. The second round looked pretty much the same, so let's take a look at the results. So the H&N pellets bounced right off. Zero penetration. 
The FTS went nearly through the first layer and may have penetrated completely had the second layer not been there. The Hypermax pellets blew through the first layer and went partially into the second layer. Take a look at the back of the first layer to give you a better idea. The H&Ns had almost no impact. The FTS almost made it through while the Hypermax poked through into the second layer. Also take a quick look at the FTS and Hypermax pellets I dug out of the fiberboard. The Hypermax pellets look so good you could put them back in the gun and fire them again, although I don't recommend that for a variety of reasons. The FTS pellets deformed and expanded and as a result had less penetration overall. So the Hypermax has this thing almost sealed up, but one hurdle remains. I sometimes like to shoot at a soft target, and generally when I do I prefer something a bit more lively than ballistic gel. So this time, we're going to shoot at an apple. So the H&N actually went all the way through the apple, which by this point was pretty surprising. Other than that, it was fairly unremarkable. So let's move on to the FTS. Not bad at all. You can see in the entry photo the apple began to split from the force of the pellet impact. And finally, the Hypermax. Again, it did the best job. The video may or may not impress you, but the entry wound is clearly the most significant of the bunch, with the apple splitting along half its width. The exit hole is slightly depressed from all the flesh the Hypermax blew out upon exit. Clearly, the Hypermax has the power to back up its accuracy and velocity. I didn't expect too much from the H&N going into this test, but it fell short by a pretty wide margin. From the start it had the most inconsistent weight pellet to pellet, accuracy was generally poor, and it all but failed every penetration test I threw at it. I'm not sure if the 1377 is a bit inadequate power-wise and failed to obdurate the skirts, or if the H&N coppers are just generally substandard, but they came in dead last each and every time. I can't recommend these even for casual blinking, although it's important to note H&N manufactures some excellent pellets. The Beeman FTS is a great all-around pellet, one of the aforementioned excellent pellets manufactured by H&N. It penetrated somewhat less than the Hypermax and might be a tick less accurate, but it's also substantially less money. As we saw from the picture comparing fired FTS pellets with fired Hypermax pellets, the copper coat is probably doing very little, if anything at all, in terms of keeping the pellet together. Expansion was actually quite impressive, which makes sense given this pellet's original intent as a field target round. I'd consider the FTS a strong contender in the 1377 and guns of similar power, with my only reservation its heavy weight and subsequent trajectory. I'm really curious how they respond to the flat top valve and piston mod. I almost didn't include the Hypermax in this test as it came off a bit gimmicky, but I'm certainly glad I did. 
The addition of these pellets alone took my stock 1377 to the next level. It outpenetrated and outshot every round I've tried in this gun to date. The approximate 10 cents per shot is a bit difficult to stomach being exponentially more expensive than an average pellet, but at the end of the day, these aren't average pellets. They're ultra premium quality and command an ultra premium price. And really when it comes down to it, I'd only ever use these in the field. It might take me a year or two to burn through a box of 100, so the economic issue really isn't a concern, especially in light of the added performance. As mentioned in the intro, I'm going to install a flat top piston and valve and run some of these same tests with the same pellets in similar atmospheric conditions to see what tangible difference this upgrade offers.